All right, welcome. We are talking about looping, and this is an example video. We're going to apply looping to write a rock, scissors, paper game. So we're going to ask the user to input either rock, scissors, paper, and then we're going to randomly generate the computer's move and then compare them. Now, if you don't know rock, scissors, paper, I mean, come on, do you really not know rock, scissors, paper? Uh, but if you don't know it, the rules are very simple. There, you randomly generate the computer's move and then you compare it to the user's move and rock will beat what is it scissors but rock will lose to paper scissors will beat paper and that's that's all you need to know <laughs> all right so um, we're gonna we're gonna ask the user for an input we're gonna randomly generate the computer's input and then display some messages and we have to resolve ties. So if the computer generates rock and the uh, the user inputs rock, for example, then we have to resolve that tie. And we have to keep regenerating and keep asking the user, so that's going to be a loop. All right, let's get started. In the problem statement, we're told that we have to use the random module, so we have to import that. And even though we're not using it just yet, Usually all your imports go at top, so we're going to import random. It seems weird to be importing it before we use it, um, but you know, again, they all go at top, so you can see very clearly what modules you need in the in the program. All right, now after that, we're going to print a little welcome message. Print welcome to rock scissors paper and then ask the user to input his or her move. So uh, because this is uh, an input, we need the input function, and we're going to save the result as player. Player equals input. Please input your move. OK, there we go. And then what we're going to do is randomly generate the computer's move. And actually, I'm going to add comments as we go through this. Um, so this is uh, get players move. Okay, so now the following block comments will this will be uh, generate generate computers move. Okay, so we're gonna generate the way we're gonna do this is to generate an integer between zero and three or zero one and two, and then based on what that integer is, we're gonna assign the computers move to be either rock scissors or paper. So I'm going to say rand int. Now I'm going to call the random module random dot, and then I want rand int. I want to generate a random integer between zero and three. And remember, it does not. We've used this function before. It does not include three. So this is going to generate a random integer be zero, one, or two using the rand int function from the random module. Now we're going to say uh, if if rand int equals equals zero, then the computer's move will be how about rock? And l if rand int equals equals one, then the computer's move will be scissors. And then else, right? Because there's only one other choice, the computer's move is paper. So there we go. So we generate a random computer move like that. That's pretty cool. Now what we have to do is show the user the results of that. The computer has scissors, for example. So we're going to print the computer has, and then we need to add to that the computer's move, which is already a string, so we don't need to convert it to a string. And then just to be exact, we're going to append a period just to match you know, the uh, example run up there computer has blank. All right, good. So this is just, uh, I'll just add a comment there. Display computer move. Excellent. Now the next thing we need to do possibly is to resolve ties. So this is going to require a loop because I'm going to keep looping so long as there's a tie. And I can't use a for loop here. It has to be a while loop because I don't know ahead of time how many times I have to loop. I just keep looping while there's a tie. So I'm just going to add a block comment here. Resolve ties. 
Okay, and we'll say while uh, while computer equals equals player. So while those are two, you know, identical moves, then we are going to ask the player again for a move. So I'll just copy and paste that after I indent, right? And we have to regenerate the computer's move. So again, I'll just copy and paste that. All right, so the when you copy and paste, sometimes uh, the indentation gets off a little bit. So let me just fix that. So there's there are two levels of indentation here. There's inside the while loop and then inside this if else. So you see that? And then after the if else, we're going to show the computer's move. Right? And now if they're the same thing still, uh, then the while loop continues. And it continues until the tie is resolved. Now the last thing to do then is to, to determine, to print the results, paper covers rock or whatever. And then you, you lose or you win. So this, be, this comes after the uh, while loop. And so this is going to display results. All right, so there are a couple ways of doing this, but it really boils down to a bunch of if statements. So you can say something like this. Uh, if player equals equals uh, rock. So if the player ended up with rock, then um, we can then the computer either has scissors or paper because it does, it's not a rock at this point because we resolved the tie. So then we can say if uh, computer equals equals scissors okay and why is it not autom it's not automatically indenting that has me concerned. I forgot my colon that's why. There we go. All right. Then, in this case, rock, uh, scissors beats rock. So then we would print something like this. We would say, uh, scissors beats, or no, no, that's not true. Rock beats scissors, right? Rock just destroys the scissors. Rock beats, I need to brush up on my rock, paper, scissors. I'm just going to go play a couple games. I'm going to be right back. No, I'm just kidding. Rock beats scissors, and then uh, you win. Hooray! with an exclamation point. Or uh, we could say then, uh, if that's not the case, so this would just be an else, and this is still inside the uh, player has it has rock, so uh, either the computer has scissors or paper. So now if this was the case, we would say um, the paper covers rock, maybe. We would say something like that. Paper covers rock, you lose. And and uh, kind of maybe a, just a period, not an exclamation point. All right, and this matches what we have up here. Right? Paper covers rock, you lose. All righty. So now, an an else if to the player's move. So I'm going to type l if, but I'm going to line it up with the player's move. L if player equals equals scissors. Okay, in this case, we're going to say if computer has rock, right, if the computer has the rock, and I forgot the colon again, then we're going to print, let's see, the scissors, scissors, uh, uh, rock beats scissor in this case. Rock beats scissors, uh, you lose, period. But else, we're going to print. So in that case, then the uh, computer must have paper. So scissors, scissors beats paper. You win. Hooray. All right, good. Good to go. And then uh, we could just use an else here. But I'm going to do L if. It doesn't matter because this is the last option that the player has. But I'm going to use L if player equals equals paper. Right? And in this case, if computer 
equals equals rock, then we could, and it's not indenting. That's, that's freaking me out that it's not indenting. But anyway, uh, in this case, the rock would cover paper. Paper. <laughs> Print uh, rock covers paper. Uh, uh, not rock covers paper, silly me. Paper covers rock. That's what I meant to say. Paper covers rock. You win. Hooray! Exclamation point. Uh, else... And this has to line up with the if there. Yep. Else, I'm, I almost think I have an error here because the indentation is not working. Anyway, uh, we'll figure that out when we run this. Print, so in this case, the uh, computer, let's see, you have paper, the computer has scissors, and scissors beats paper. Scissors beats paper, you lose, period. Aww. Okay, so that should be that should be good. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna run it. I'm gonna save it. Control S, run it. Cross my fingers. Uh, I spelled welcome wrong. Okay, welcome to rock scissors paper. Input your move scissors. The computer has paper. Scissors beats paper. You win. Hooray! Okay, so that worked. But let's see if a tie will do what it's supposed to. So I'm gonna run it again. Please input your move. Let's say rock. Computer has paper, paper covers rock, you lose. Okay, great, that worked. Please input your move, how about paper? Computer has paper. Okay, so here we go, so we have a tie, and then it says again, please input your move. Uh, I'm gonna go with paper again, I'm feeling good with paper. Computer has paper, ah, I'm still sticking with paper. Paper has rock, paper covers rock, I win, yes. And so the game ends. The functionality is correct. I don't know why it wasn't auto-indenting, but it worked. Now, finally, um, I just want to point out that, you know, you want to put your name up here, you know, the author. Put your name there and put last updated. Okay. Put a space for that. Also put descriptive comments, like at the beginning, like um, this is a rock, scissors, paper game. game. Uh, it uses a loop to resolve ties. Something like that. Okay, and then you should have comments here and there, you know, like we have comments here. All right, and we, you should probably have a little bit more comments, but for brevity, I'm going to leave the comments out. And also, I want to point out that my variable names are descriptive, like we have player and we have computer, rand int, right? Uh, that, that's a random integer. Those are our only variables. Also, I've blocked off the code nicely, right? Like I have spaces um, where, where like there's a break in thought, but like when we generate the computer's move, all of that is together because it's, it's uh, working together. Those lines are working together to do one thing. And then I have a space and then, it, you know, display and so on. So uh, you want to keep that in mind for the readability of your code. All right. Thank you.